moving on to the next speaker dr mahesh shanmugam who is going to be speaking on the erm removal in unusual situations good afternoon uh, thank you dr skurneshwari and uh, thanks uh, dr dhanashri dr pramod and the sn team for this opportunity to meet you all this afternoon so let's look at erm removal in unusual situations i think they kind of find these topics to give me so that they can torture me a little bit so the points to ponder when we have to like remove the erm in unusual situation is is the te technique of removal any different and is it worth operating at all so let's start with the combined hematoma of retina and retinal pigment epithelium these patients often come with what looks like an epithelial membrane and if you were to look at the yeah if you can look at it like there is a predominantly epithelial proliferation what we see here and there is a degree of uh, interretinal disorganization and what we see here is a little bit of retina peeping up through the epithelial membrane so the for a large part the surgical technique is the same except for the fact that like this epithelial membrane goes into the retina in one place at least in the chhrp associated membranes so we peel it all around and and towards working towards that area where the epithelial membrane is going into the retina and that part we dissect with the scissors because we cannot pull this off because that will disorganize that the further the retinal disorganization and retinal tear can happen so we have to look for this area where the membrane is going inside and then cut it off with the scissors and this is the post operative appearance and the retina takes its own time to get back to its normal anatomy so this is after a few months you can see still see the retina has not gone back to its place completely sometimes if the epithelial membrane is very flimsy in a chhrp i do a no vitrectomy erm removal just two ports just go inside and remove the erm the advantages like these are young children they may they are prone to develop cataract post vitrectomy and uh, no vitrectomy erm removal decreases the risk of a cataract formation and doesn't increase the risk of a retinal break formation this is a bugbear of doing erm removal in chhrp so this is a 10 year old child where i did the surgery and the child developed a recurrence of the erm and this is post re surgery for the recurrent erm and despite which you see there is some more proliferation of the tissue so this time i decided not to do anything and this tissue kind of matured over time and stopped worsening and this has been the same for the last 8 years and the child's vision improved from 636 to 618 and maintains like this the visual improvement post erm removal in chhrp is modest so do we do surgery in chhrp associated membrane earlier this used to be a taboo that people used to say that don't touch these eyes but yes we can do the surgery If histopathological studies have shown that there is an ERM component in these patients and removing that seems to help in about like half to two thirds of the patients the vision may improve and if there is a history of recent vision loss and presence of predominantly preretinal fibrosis then these are the patients who tend to improve younger patients there is limited improvement possibly because there is a component of amblyopia and inherent retinal dysplasia so as far as chhrp is concerned there are case series on which we can base our decisions on but there is a separate subset of patients where there are no case series just case reports so we have to take the decisions based on case to case basis one such is here so this is a unilateral solitary retinal angioma with an epithelial membrane so the surgical technique is not very different so we have peeled the erm and once i stained i found that like because a young patient i hadn't peeled the hyaloid on the nasal side we peel that then we go around peeling the epithelial the ilm as you have been seeing talk after talk after talk after talk of ilm peeling the same in addition you you treat this peripheral angioma with the double free stock cryotic cryotherapy but not all the angioma associated erms are simple so this is in a vhl patient who has a severe erm with a traction retinal attachment so this angiomas have been treated with cryotherapy as well as laser photocoagulation you see the significant amount of scarring a careful vitrectomy is being performed to decrease the risk of retinal break and you can see this thick erm extending from the disc right up to the peripheral tumor which is very carefully peeled off and a very limited vitrectomy to relieve only the significant traction like this uh, segmentation of the bridging traction is being done the key is not to create a retinal break in these patients and the angioma is also being treated so this is a post operative appearance you can see that the vessels have come back to normal caliber and the fovea is back in place this is a much more severe uh, vhl associated vmt as well as epithelial membrane this is a one eyed patient 
So you can see the thick posterior hyoid. The patient in incidentally has a vitreo papillary traction and the fovea is dug towards the disc as well. So here there are numerous angiomas in the periphery with fibrous tissue, so which is supported with the 42 band and a very limited vitrectomy to remove only the thickened posterior hyaloid and the epiretinal membrane is being done. You can see the intentionally created higher buccal effect to support the peripheral angioma. Superiorly, there are multiple angiomas which are scarred down and that is where the fibrous tissue is originating from. You can see that's the posterior hyaloid which is like so thick. So which is very carefully dissected, taking care not to create a retinal break and that's the epiretinal membrane which is also being peeled off. This is a postoperative appearance. Fortunately, this lady gained from 636 to 66 and the vitreo traction and the epiretinal membrane have relieved. So this is a very rare patient of a bilateral retinoblastoma post-treatment. One eye was fine, the other eye had this epiretinal membrane. Once again, here you can see only two ports, a no vitrectomy epiretinal membrane removal is what was done in this child. We remove that ERM and leave it in place. And nothing further was done. And uh, it took its own time. This surgery was done somewhere in 2012. You can see this is the preoperative appearance. And it was 2019, seven years later, that the fovea regained almost the near normal contour. And the child's vision improved over 636. So the pre and post operative appearance. Coming to the last part of my presentation, ERM associated with retinal degenerations. There was a recent study where they have studied the vitreoretinal interface anomalies in patients with retinitis pigmentosa. They found that ERM to be the most common vitreoretinal interface anomaly in retinitis pigmentosa, followed by VMT and lamellar macular hole. And over 37 months of follow-up, they found that patients with ERM are the ones who lost vision. In contrast, these two patients kind of maintain the vision. So ERMs in RP determine a significant loss of vision. And this is one such patient who incidentally has a LHCP as well. You can see a very careful peeling of the epiretinal membrane is being performed and uh, it made a distinction between the epiretinal membrane tissue as well as the LHCP tissue. What is stained yellow is the LHCP tissue. So the ERM part of it is the whole LHCP and the ERM is dissected off and the ERM is separated off from this LHCP tissue using the scissors and the rest of it is stuffed into the, the lamellar hole. So what are the considerations of surgery in patients with RP? These patients already have compromised photoreceptors and the ERM associated traction and the surgery associated trauma because of light and dye can cause further disruption of the vision. That's something which we need to understand. And OCT biomarkers do not play a role. We cannot look at the EZ or the hyperreflective foci and say this patient will improve, this patient will not improve in patients with RP. To summarize, CHRRP and RP can attempt ERM removal, limited visual potential, and there is a potential for vision loss as well. ERM and VHL worth considering surgery. Progression of VHL may negate the benefits over time. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. MPS, sir, for the very unusual presentation, which we always expect from you all the time.